Neighborhoods meeting, West Burlington City Council. Old order. Roll call, please. Christie? Here. Crowner? Here. Heitmeyer? Here. Lees? Here. Waterman? Here. Need to perfect and approve the agenda under item number seven. Policy number two. I'm going to pull that because we, 10 years ago on December 15th, we passed that policy already. Motion to approve is amended. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Christy? So we're just voting that it's already Just to been? amend the agenda. Amended. Pardon me? We're amending the agenda. Oh, okay. Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. I'm sorry, Crowner. Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman. Aye. Let me clarify that. It's off the agenda because we don't have to pass it again. It's already been passed on December 10th, 2010, something like that, or 15th, 2010. Consent agenda. Motion to approve is presented. Support. The motion was support to approve consent agenda items 1 through 10 which are the minutes from the regular city council meeting on August 5th, 2020, payment of Barn Grover and Sons Glass Company, payment of Brockway Mechanical Roofing, payment to Simmering Quarry, payment to Quality Equipment Incorporated, payment to Angela Moore for tuition reimbursement, payment to Iowa Department of Natural Resources, payment to Felt Fire, payment to Diamond Vogel, and the claims list as presented in the amount of $245,651.47. Any discussion? Roll call. Crowner? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Staff reports. Dan? Hello, Dan. I was getting my mic going. <laughs> Anybody have anything for Dan? Mike, come up here because we can hardly ever hear you. <laughs> You're going to hear me tonight. Talk loud. Start with, I just want to get back to you on some things from the last meeting. I was questioned on the Houston project. I got a call at 4.30 this afternoon that they're planning on starting the week of Labor Day after the holiday they'll be starting that week sometime. I'll have a construction meeting and walk through here next week probably beforehand to mark out everything. And in that job uh, I was questioned about extending the sidewalks on Melville down to Houston and then from Spring to the, the mall. And I had Matt run that in with the pricing we're getting as a change order on that. To extend the two from Melville on down to Houston it came back at $32,623. May be able to knock 11000 off that. It depends on there's four driveways, and as long as they meet no more than a 2% grade for the ADA that we don't have to mess with driveways, we won't have to pull those approaches out. We can keep go right on by them. And then from Spring Street down to Houston was $41,126, and there's telephone poles that involved that have to be moved. Um, I think one phone box and possibly some trees removed to get that in down that way. The Melville was both sides of the street? Both sides, yep. Did you, would it be half that if you only did one side or not? I would assume because there's two driveways on each side, so if, if you only had to do two driveways and that, it probably should be, that, that should have that. I, I, I didn't ask for that, but that sounds like it should work that way. The other thing was uh, on the jetting the sewers. I got, like I said, there's a handful that we have issues with that I will personally, we will call and put door knockers and let them know. And 
I talked to Katie and Katie said she'd talk to uh, Kelly about it and I guess there's some program we don't have if we got we could do a mass text because when I go to do fall jetting and spring jetting uh, the week before we could give them a week's notice every citizen but I know that we will be doing jetting on this week so put your toilet lids down and <laughs> be prepared Some complaints about the traffic lights on gear at Target and the mall. Um, they seem to switch to the mall and Target when there's no one there and you get stopped on Gear Avenue. Uh, part of the controllers burned out today, they found out. The traffic control people will be down not next week but the week after with the equipment and they'll have to reset it and reprogram everything and try and get that to where it's not. Right now it's just on a time, when, when there's a default in and something happens, they go to a time thing. So that's why it's so long on gear then it switches so long the other way. It's the same thing going on down at the college because when the college put their drive in before my time, they didn't want to pay for pods and the loops were tore out when they put the driveway in. So that intersection is a timed intersection. There's nothing I can do unless we put pods in the college entrance. It's still gonna switch to the freeway or the college even if nobody's there for the gear traffic will have to stop. Next thing is uh, some work zone safety issues. They've always been there since I've been here in my 25 years. Um, they've steadily got worse and worse and worse. And I'm sure by now you all know that I've been hit in a work zone. Um, Monday morning, we'd give a three day notice to Facebook, the Hawkeye radio, to let people know I had to shut down Gear Avenue and Mount Pleasant to replace a valve and fix a water issue. And we let them know it was gonna be a two day thing. We just closed the intersection off and I had a person pull up to the barricades and um, inform me that it was a public road that I'm not allowed to do that and he can go through here if he wants. Kind of a, I would call it a verbal harassment to me, it went on and on and I'd call Jesse and officer came out take care of it he then proceeded back around 61 came by our work site to honk to make us all look because when you're on your work zone you never know somebody honking somebody's going to hit something so we all look as he give us a gesture out the window with his hand and at the same time we heard noise and turn around and another vehicle had went up into Johnny Johnson's private drive come across what I call Johnny's front yard even though it's concrete came into our work zone over Johnny's curb, went back out over another curb along the chain link fence and a pole to get past the barricades to head north on gear. As we were trying to figure that situation out, Jesse's guys were there to help again. We went to get more equipment and we had a C bus pull up and we had a confrontation with the C bus, Jesse did. And they were upset and was gonna move cones and come through. Angie's here tonight. That she can talk when I'm done, or if you want to wait till the public to talk. Oh, she might as well talk with you. Um, she has plenty of incidents at Burlington with elbows getting clipped. Um, actually, guys that are getting spit on by traffic coming by. We just lost a man in New London that worked for the Mount Pleasant DOT shop a week ago. He was in his dump truck on 218 by Olds when the tractor trailer went into the wrong lane hit their safety crash trailer hooked to the back of the tandem dump truck, totaled it. The recording on the semi, I was told when they pulled the computer out that that semi was running 66 miles an hour when it hit the back of that DOT truck. The bed was sheared off, crushed the cab with the driver in it, and the people coming down, the witnesses said the bed ejected into the air. I have a picture of it that it spun around headed the opposite way there were three men on the highway in front of him working. And I'm guessing he thought that day he was the safest guy on that job. It's getting too close to home. I'm trying to do all I can, OSHA regulations, DOT, my coning. Um, I'm working with Angie. We've talked to Patrick. Uh, I'm willing to sit down with the county attorneys. If we've got to change some city codes, or enforcements or penalties. My honest opinion for 
my employees' safety and mine, because while I'm on the clock here, I really don't want to have to bury one of my employees. Or I don't want to watch one of them live in a wheelchair the rest of their life. So I'm just asking for you guys to help out however you can with this situation. Whatever codes or regulations or fines or what we can do, I feel the public needs to realize that it needs to hurt. We need to make people aware of what's going on in work zones. It's not just out on the highways. And like I said, Angie's got plenty of incidents and she can pass on to you things that are happening with Burlington Streets, Burlington Water. Carter out here at the county has the same issues. And I feel like a lot of these charges are minor, get swept on by, and things go on. And I feel it's up to you guys to do something about this to help me before we have a loss of life here in our community. That's all I got. Angie you can add to Anybody that. Anybody have anything for Mike? Were any tickets issued? Jess, did you issue any tickets? Yeah, and by the way, it doesn't matter what time of day, night, any incident since I've been here, our West Burlington Police Department, whether it was Jesse, Frank, anybody, when we call, they're there immediately. But you also have to understand, they can't leave the one officer I got sitting in every work zone I got because they have other calls to answer and things to do. So the other thing I forgot, they're going to be trading a car, and I'm asking to not sell the old Crown Vic and get your $2,500. I'm asking if I can have that with the video camera and start setting that up at each work zone when it's set up so that any, he said, she said, I have a video of that person coming into my work zone when something does happen. And I'm surprised with the, the sea bus. I mean. Not as surprised as Jesse was. Did we track that person down and report him? Yeah. Well, I'm all for keeping the car and using it like you said. I'm willing to do anything we can do to help you. Unfortunately, it's just another step and another employee's got to move the car from one side to the another and everything just keeps slowing progress down, but uh, we got to do what we got to do to protect our ourselves. Mike, have you looked at codes or the things that you brought as recommendations or I mean, we can talk about that going forward. No, I'm, but... I'm working that with Angie and codes and it seems like some of the stuff that the state laws out on like Interstate 80 don't apply when you get into us. Phil Carter out there, or Brian Carter out there said that same thing that um, out in the county doesn't have near the problems as when you're working on a county road close to the town. Mm -hmm. Pat can address that a little bit, Andy. Uh -huh. You want to make a few comments? Uh, I, I can. I, I, I have not had a chance to examine the state law, but I think that's correct that the state law, we would not be able to just simply apply the BOT or the highway laws to our city streets. But we can do a lot with our municipal code to enhance penalties. And of course, we already have the example here where we're going to the county attorney and using the criminal code to charge individuals who actually strike people or come close to striking people. If they do something extraordinarily dangerous, there are numerous state code provisions that can be used to prosecute. But as a council, we can also enhance our local ordinance to make it more effective for some of the more potentially dangerous offenses but don't end up you know rising to the level of something we can use the state code for when people start paying heavier fines they're going to start taking it a lot more seriously we can hurt them in the pocketbook with our local ordinance as well and i just spoke with dan before the meeting i'm going to take a look at the city code and see what enhancements we can we can write into that to make this a better situation for our workers Okay. I think it also needs to be publicized very well um, what fines, what things that we are doing um, when you guys change the codes, making sure that's publicized. You know, we have a, in safety, we have a triangle or a pyramid that we look at and it says for every 10,000 near misses, you're going to have a thousand serious accidents. Okay? For every thousand serious accidents, you're going to have a hundred that are going to be almost critical. For every 100, you're going up to 10, 
that is going to be hospitalization. And for every 10, you're going to have one that's a death. Okay? We're having enough near misses, and it's getting to where, you know, this is all happening in a month. We've had these serious incidents. All right? So people are getting more brazen about they think they can do whatever they want. And they're not taking any consideration whatsoever that they are seriously putting these gentlemen's lives in line. So as a council, I want you guys to think about, <coughs> and bear with me, but I want you to think about what these guys have to do in the course of the day, okay? He's got a project. He's got to do the announcements. He's got to make sure it's publicized in the paper and radio. They have to do a walkthrough. They have to make their plans. They have to go set up the site, so they've got to make sure that they're following all OSHA, all DOT regulations. They have to set up their cones, they have to set up their barrels, they have to set up their signage, they have to worry about the trucks, they have to make sure the lights are right. Then they have to worry about the project itself. What equipment are they going to use? How are they going to use that equipment? What are they going to run into? Electrical, water, you know, fiber optics, what are their challenges in doing that? Okay? Are they going to have to trench? Are they going to have to shore? Are they following the regulations on that? What personal protective equipment does this guys have to be dealing with and making sure they've got? Okay? Then they've got to watch each other. They've got to watch the moving equipment. They've got to watch each other. They've got to worry about drivers that drive by too fast and just your regular issue drivers. Now take all these things and all these things running through their mind while they're trying to do one project and then put an idiot involved in it. Okay? It just takes that one person to kill somebody. And as much as they try to protect themselves and as much as Mike works, and he really does, he does a great job of that. As hard as he works to make sure his employees are safe out there, okay, it takes focus leaving for one second for us to lose someone. And they can't be watching everyone all the time. So for someone to jump a curb, go through someone's private property, drive right down the middle of a work zone, jump another curve, drive through somebody's private property, just to go around because they're late or they're having a bad day, okay? There is nothing more <laughs> disgusting for me because I've seen the pictures, I've seen the video of what happens in these situations. So it is all I'm asking is please support him. Patrick has some great ideas. We talked quite a while before we started today. Uh, he's gonna bring some proposals and some information to you guys. Please support them on this, and we know that we're protecting them here for you and we're out there. Like I say, my almost 25 years here, it's been going on since I started here in 96, I think it was, or, uh, but there was near, not near the cars, not at all. And now you've got 10 times the vehicles on the road, and everyone's looking at their cell phone doing something else. I mean, people just are not paying attention. And like Angie explained, we have so much to pay attention to now with utilities and digging and what we're doing and moving our equipment and having our heads on a swivel. And that's what I did after Monday and that happened. I pulled them all off to the side again to the truck and explained to them, you have to protect each other, especially the two new guys that haven't been on the road that much. Why somebody's looking in, the other two are running the jet truck in the hole, the guys in the back oh, the other guy's standing here. I want your head watching Mount Pleasant. You, you watch North Gear. You have to uh, uh, notify us, allow us, if someone else like that is showing up to come in our work zone to stop one of us from getting hurt. It's just another distraction trying to do our job. And it's got down, like I said, I, we got to do half hour pre-checks. No, that's what happened up at the DOT. There was no pre-check the driver didn't do on his truck. And that's the first thing OSHA asked for when they walked into that crash zone. And they didn't have a pre-check, so Mike can't say it's going to happen, but I'm guessing the DOT will get a OSHA fine for not having that filled out. Three quick things. Anything we should be looking at besides the videoing and the passing of ordinances with higher fines? That's all I'm asking. I, I feel personally, uh, in my opinion, is that if these state laws have never been protecting us all these years I've been out there doing it, now's the time and not to drag our feet we need to make penalties like she said that or patrick said that it's going to hurt pocketbooks and get it publicized and maybe we can get our community to stop and think before someone gets hurt and second would you at least have a conversation with brad about if we need the vehicle to do the videoing or if we can find an easier solution than that um, yes 
Okay. Um, the point with that is, is ten times car? ten times out of ten, when I call an officer and there's a squad car sitting there, you would not believe how slow the traffic goes by and how. Okay. It changes. So it's also but a deterrent. But in the same point that I asked that we talk to Patrick or attorneys or whoever, I'm not sure that I don't want to fine for moving a police car around with its <laughs> lights on, and I'm not an officer, and I don't want some lawyer to come back and say that because we're not doing something right. I mean, we need to find out if yeah. us as city people can still use that car for cameraing and have the lights on to help with traffic control without having an officer have to sit at every time I got to do something. I got to yeah, shut down Broadway for a blow up. It's coming up. I'm getting locates and borrowing more signs because it's going to be one lane overnight and trying to do the signage over there. I got another one up on Broadway. I got several main street projects that I got to get into. And after Monday's project, yeah, I honestly don't even want to go there. Yeah, well, I think the videoing is a good idea. I just I wonder if we could do it without the car. Just if expense there's some wise, way but... that there's some portable. Well, maybe the, when I suggested the car, the part of the benefit of that would be having what looks like a police car sitting there. Right? Okay. Help slow things down. That's where I was thinking because Brad does have some mobile cameras that would work. But and then this way, if they move, they can move with it. It's more portable, plus you got the added benefit. It looks like there's a cop there that will slow traffic down. Okay. I think that the added benefit is worth that, the little bit of extra. Or if we got to have a tripod with a camera, like when we're painting, you're on one quarter of the intersection. Right. It seemed down that line where we're in our barrels working 15 to 20 minutes. Then we hop to another side. We pick it up and move, or we move the car over. I don't want a car sitting back far enough to get the whole intersection because then the film ain't going to be enough to show what right. happened mm -hmm. yeah and, and and for the city's benefit it's not he said she said yeah if you can take that video to a judge okay well have that have that conversation and see if you think the car is the best use and and the legal side of still having a police car painted and um and then my third thing was just real quick for jesse do you agree we need to enact other ordinances or do you feel the things we need are already on the books and we just need to enforce them. That's something that I uh, had to like sit down and double check all of our ordinances and see how they will match up with working in the zone and, and see if we have the right one or if we have to come up with something else. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm in favor of everything you're talking about. Just bring us some proposals. All right. Thank you very much. I think we're all ready to protect our guys. Absolutely. Alrighty. Jesse, you got anything? Oh, one thing. <clears throat> Tomorrow we're going to do the uh, GTSV saturation patrol with Des Moines County, Burlington, Iowa State Patrol, um, Highway 61, Highway 34 corridors through town. It's going to start at 5.30 and it'll last approximately four hours. That's where we go out and do heavy present speeding looking for OWIs distracted driving all that so and by having just all right Sean the new seat so on the building side I'm about done with the plans for Menards and for Walmart's um, eye centers. We're still working on several local uh, nuisances. Uh, I did see that we are getting a few of them taken care of. Uh, I drove by one tonight that when I came in, I had just driven by it, uh, getting the lawn taken care of. We do have on the building side, I issued two business licenses. One was a food truck. I have one that came in and I'm not a fan of when they send the check in with it uh, because it appears to be a home business, a home-based business. Uh, and I'm working to, as soon as I get those plans wrapped up, I want to contact that person who submitted that application to clarify it. Because if it's a home business, there's a difference in do we do a business license uh, as opposed to, to not running on a home business. On the fire side, I do have a couple things on the agenda. Um, we did go out and do some testing with uh, the various engines doing some flow checks and notice that on the tower uh, we have excellent flow as far as the pressures on the truck 
but on the other two engines, we do have to run them pretty hard to get the proper pressures and flows. Uh, but otherwise, things are going good uptown with the fire department. Uh, we should be seeing um, the, the Connex containers were delivered for the training site. Concrete was poured, and I've been uh, working with West Liberty Foods and with Goodwin uh, Home Moving to get that trailer moved down here from Mount Pleasant. Um, and then beyond that, when I was a police officer, I was struck five times, once by a car, once by an inattentive driver, and the balance was by drunk drivers. Um, I had a fellow officer get struck from behind. It broke his neck, broke his leg, and a couple ribs. Um, he recovered. I obviously recovered, but I do to this day still have a disability on my left shoulder, just a small one, from when I got struck by a drunk driver. So um, I can't support my Mike's position enough in getting some safety out there for those guys. I knew the guy in New London. Uh, there was a fire department last week that had all three of their fire trucks taken out by a semi driver. So, I mean, I know you guys are going to do the right thing. It's weighing heavily on your minds, and I just stand fully behind you in, in the decision that you'll make on that. So, if you got anything for me, you have anything? Oh, thanks. Kelly, you got anything? Not tonight. Leslie? <clears throat> Ooh. And then the physical year is always stuff going on. <laughs> Auditors were here last week. And we submitted paperwork for the workers' comp payroll audit. We're working on the street finance report. And you'll see that in a couple weeks on the agenda. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Okay. Any questions? Kathy, you going on? Oh, uh, yeah. On our trees project that we're working on, we had the West Burlington um, Cub Scouts signed up, and now we have Girl Scouts as well. So it's uh, we're still working on this. Also, I just want to remind everyone once again that September 5th, we'll have a car show at the parking lot um, at the mall, the South Parking Lot. And that's it. Okay. Andy? Remind me, I've got somebody on the trees thing that's interested in donating. Oh. Um, Let's have that conversation. And then I, I had one question. I just wanted to go back to uh, Mike and Mike and Dan real fast on the Houston Street project with the cost of the sidewalks that you talked about. Are, are we going to bring that up and formally talk about that? Well, we can put it on the agenda next time. Typically, when I, we'll bring it up as a, we'll have the engineer prepare a change <coughs> order. And then you guys will vote on whether you're going to accept that change order or not. We'll try to get that, have him get that ready for the next meeting so you can uh, run that through and decide what you want to do with that. Okay. And then. Walker told me, too, that he hadn't had a chance to walk as he's going by what he's seen on the AS. So I don't have a. You know, like I said, the utilities is going to be a problem getting your thing moved to go down to Houston. Right. So my follow up to that was are we just going to get do it all or don't do it? Or are we going to get do this piece, do this piece, do this piece? We can have him do the change orders in, in separate pieces. Okay. And that way you can approve them however you want to do it. Perfect. That's all I had. Boys? Any update on the cartel property cleanup? That's why we're having a closed session. Oh, okay. okay. We'll see how that goes. Trace? I don't have anything. Al? Yep. Good. Okay. Anyone wishing to address the council on matters that are on the agenda or not on the agenda tonight? All right. Item number one, public hearing. I'll open the public hearing on the proposed plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the South Lift Station replacement project for the city of West Burlington. Receive any written comments? No. Any verbal comments from public no i will mention um ben we had um bumped back the bids due date by two weeks um after the big storm in cedar rapids people that were trying to bid on the project i don't know if ben you want to explain why we yeah um, but i think that might we originally were going to bid the project last thursday um and then monday 
the derecho storm came through um, it really hit central and east central Iowa pretty hard um, where we are in Cedar Rapids um, and surrounding areas uh, winds were commonly over 100 miles an hour and southwest Cedar Rapids where our office is they're estimating 140 um, and widespread damage there were power outages everywhere internet down um, telephones were the cell phone service was spotty at best um, and when I could get through to contractors and vendors they were having trouble communicating with each other to even um, put a bid in so we issued an addendum to push the bid back two weeks to August 27th and the final completion date pushed back as well um, we uh, are working with design engineers in Cedar Rapids on the water tower project and the landfill project um, we may see some delays on that um, there was a, a man killed on a bike trail east of Cedar Rapids and I found out this morning that that was their office manager um, so he uh, had a tree fall on him um, so they're working through that and their building had damage as well um, so we're gonna keep moving where we can and keep going but um, it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal <laughs> so, if there's any questions on anything we have any questions do you think two weeks is enough um, we're our office is up and rolling again and I think I think we're we're gonna be fine there so well I know landlines can't get through to my cell phone <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean we'll we'll be in contact with contractors and make sure make sure they're able to communicate with their vendors and and that sort of thing um, as of today Lynn County we've still got about 20,000 without power um, but um, some of the vendors are in Des Moines or you know other places and um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it two weeks seemed like a plenty of time at the time <laughs> we issued that addendum on Tuesday and I didn't have power or internet so we actually had to get through to one of our offices that still had power like the only one in Iowa that didn't have power issues <laughs> and have them issue it so um, we'll keep watching it and plan right now is to bid on August 27th <clears throat> Okay. Any other comments on the public hearing? We'll close the public hearing. New business item number one is to consider a resolution approving the plan specifications, form a contract, and estimate cost of construction for the South Lift Station replacement project. And the engineer's estimate for that is about is eight hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars. Should have mentioned that in the public hearing, but I'll mention it now. Motion approved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Hi, Meyer. Aye. Lees. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Christie. Aye. Crowner. Aye. Motion carried. Item number two is consider payment to Snyder Associates for engineering services related to the following projects the gear avenue trail project in the amount of five thousand four hundred forty five dollars and three cents and the lures park sponsored project in the amount of six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars motion to approve support the motion was support any discussion roll call please aye waterman aye christy aye browner aye heitmeyer aye Motion carried. <laughs> I'm number three is to consider authorizing repairs to fire department engine number two. Uh, estimated cost is between five and six thousand dollars. Motion approved. Support. <clears throat> Motion to support. Is there any discussion? How old is that engine, Sean? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. And 
Florida one next July. It still takes a year, so we'll have at least two more years for sure. Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Christy? Aye. Browner? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Please? Aye. <clears throat> Motion carried. Item number four is to consider purchase of seven Seek Thermal Imaging Units from MES at uh, each price $499, total price $3,493. So moved. Motion to approve. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Christy? Aye. Crowner? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Motion carried. Item number five is to consider granting a right-of-way permit to CenturyLink to install fiber in the city's right-of-way along Agency Road to serve their customers at 1221 South Gear, which I take it that's the hospital, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion approved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll we'll call. Crowner? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Motion carried. Item number six is consider entering into a sub-recipient agreement with Community Health Center for Southeast Iowa CHC uh, SEIA. It's a CB, CDBG award letter and a contract. Motion to approve. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Crowner? Aye. Motion carried. Item number seven is consider adopting federal mandated policies related to community development Brockland that was awarded to the city on behalf of the Community Health Centers of Southeastern Iowa. And you've got a uh, policy number one, policy number three, policy number four, policy number five, and policy number six, which policy one is the Residential Anti-Displacement Relocation Assistance Plan. Policy three is Equal Opportunity Policy. Policy four is Affirmative Fair Housing Policy. Policy five is Code of Conduct. Policy six is procurement policy. Motion to approve. Support. Motion of support to approve. Any discussion? Yeah, if I can speak just a second. Um, three quick points. Number one on the process. When we started this conversation, I wish that would have been brought to our attention at that time that the city was going to have to pass these policies in order for the health center to receive that block grant money. Um, that was the appropriate time to have that information. And, and so I hope going forward in the future, we can have that conversation before we get to this point at this meeting. Um, secondly, we took number two off of this list, which is the excessive force policy. Uh, many of you know already, I am not in favor of this policy. It has already been enacted. Um, I hope someday we can come back and look at this after we've received this grant money and have a discussion about it. Um, and then third, I just, I, I am in favor of this. I think the, the community health center does a great job for our community. I think it's something well done. So don't take my uh, reservations about that, that second policy as I don't want to fund the health center because I definitely do. I just, I don't think that policy is something we should have as a city. So that's my, that's my stand against that. But hopefully we can revisit that in the future. Thanks. I'd also like to say that I think you all know that I also disagree with that policy, but I am in favor of the uh, of this grant for the community health center. <clears throat> okay. Roll call. Please. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Christie. Aye. Crowner. Aye. Heitmeyer. Aye. Motion carried. 
Item number eight is to consider a setting a public hearing date to discuss the status of the funding for the Community Health Centers of Southeastern Iowa Disease Mitigation Project. When was that for? I didn't write that down, Kelly. Um, September, the next meeting, September next. 2nd. September 2nd. 2nd? 2nd. Motion approved. Report. Mark. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Christie? Aye. Crowner? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Motion carried. Item number nine is to consider adopting a policy for employee related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And you've had that policy to look at it. Uh, what's your feelings about it? Well, Dan, didn't you say we've had several employees that have been either exposed or they've had family um, members exposed? Most of them are one contact. step away from that. Like somebody they know may have been exposed. So we're a couple of, we're, um, we've only had, we really only had one that was actually exposed and so far tested negative. But um, it's getting closer and closer to our employees. So we need to get something passed so everyone knows where we're at with this. I'm in favor of this. I'm especially in favor that of the last part of it, where we have some flexibility, because this is such an ever-changing situation. We don't know what we're facing from day to day. So I like that we put the flexibility in there for, for our employees, and we can look at individual cases. You know, my only question when I read through it was, we haven't really set a time for when this goes away. And so I, I hope at some point we have the, uh, maybe a talk of when that is, what percentage we look at, um, just have that in the mind for the future for, for when we go away from this policy. So we want to make a motion to adopt it? Make a motion we adopt as presented. Support. support. The motion was support. Any further discussion? Dan, when you said you wanted to include, like, including paid leave beyond the 80 hours, is it you, are you going again on the um, Families First Coronavirus Response Act where they get two thirds of their salary up to so many no, weeks? No, I'm suggesting they get full pay. Yeah. That's only for That's if, they, if, if they're taking yeah. care of a family member that you can that you can pay them two thirds, and I don't think that's probably going to be an issue. Um, you are your that's that's the minimum that they require um, well then they have up to an additional 10 weeks of paid expanded family medical leave at two-thirds the employees regular rate yeah that's not FMLA okay. I just wonder if you're going to refer to this if we're specific on what we're paying and not paying my suggestion is if somebody has, if somebody's documented losing time because of COVID, mm -hmm. my, my suggestion is that you pay them full pay and not charge their leave bank just like the first two weeks. If that's a policy that you guys have to approve in an act, that's just my opinion. So far, we're not there yet. Um, if we get somebody in the two weeks and it looks like it's going to go longer, we can bring it up as a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I just wanted to put it out there so you know what I'm thinking about it. We are requiring documentation, um, us seeing uh, positive test results. so. Um, I don't think any of our employees are going to use it, but you all you always got to prepare for that. <coughs> well, and um, the employer is expected now to um, schedule in again on Thursday for a second test. You should have that back about the time his 14 days are up so he can get back to work. Well, we all know that COVID strikes people in different various ways and forms, and that after you've been diagnosed with COVID and you've had it, you can still shed the virus for three months, up to three months after you've had it, but the virus is inactivated. <clears throat> Just so 
My test results came back yesterday and they were negative, but uh, the very thing they put on the bottom is a disclaimer saying that even though you test negative, with this test result you could still be turning positive within, you know, a time period. Yeah. So. Within two weeks. Is the, the great thing is we're having this discussion with like six staff members here. Does this answer all your questions or is this vague on how the city is treating COVID issues? Uh, like, like I said, our, we can't have our people sit, uh, work from home for most people. Um, most of our people are out there in it. And that's why I think that it'd be, it's uh, that we got to pay them and not charge their banks past the two weeks. But like I said, that's a, a council policy to set. Um, they, our, our employees have major sick leave, but if you use it, it takes a long time to build that back. Um, and so since we're, we've got, uh, especially uh, police and fire people, although Sean's the only fire one on the payroll, but uh, you have them out there you know, dealing with people every day, it's, I think it's important for the employees to know that uh, we got their back and we're going to pay them. My, and the employees I've talked to about it are happy to have something so they know what to expect. And we also implemented, you know, more policies just in-house routinely as far as, you know, trying to keep it from happening. But when you have a small workforce, it's important that if they're sick, they stay home or and not not spread it. So I I think, like I said, it, you know, we tried to answer all of the scenarios that were that we knew of, but it changes so much. I don't plan on getting it at all, so that's my plan. Last part of the investigation. It's a case by case, and we've got to work with who are going to get infected and what's going to happen. Chris, you have to say that. Yeah. Do you guys wear face shields or masks when you're in the hole? Sometimes it's... Christie. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, item number 10 is a closed session. Council will go consider going into closed session in accordance with Iowa Code Section 21.5C. And I need a motion to do that. So move. Support. support. Uh, motion with support. I was going. I was going to read that okay. after the during. Well, I was make but sure go ahead. Yeah. And the and the purpose of that is item 
Uh, C is to discuss strategy with counsel on matters that are presently in litigation or where litigation is imminent, where its disclosure would be likely to prejudice or disadvantage the position of the governmental body in that litigation. So, roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Christie? Aye. Crowner? Aye. The motion carried. We usually have our closed sessions in that little conference room, but with the social distancing, I'm going to ask everyone to leave this room and just have counsel and our attorney representative be in here. You can turn off the mic. Council is now out of closed session. It's uh, 728 on uh, the 19th of uh, August 2020. Uh, after advice from our city attorney, uh, he will continue to work on the cartel property. Anybody else want to make a comment? All right. Citizen inquiries. Anybody else want to address the council matters we discussed and didn't discuss tonight? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Thank you.